Welcome into the video. I am your tech guy, Wayne, and today I wanna to walk you through how to use the new Fitbit Inspire 3 for beginners. This will be a full beginner's walkthrough. We're gonna show you right out of the box how to set it up, how to sync it with your phone. Uh, we'll walk you through the setup, and once it's paired with your phone, we'll then walk you through how to change the watch faces, how to enable notifications so you can get all your apps to ping you on your watch, and some other cool tips you'll need to know in operating it. So make sure you watch all the way to the end so you don't miss any important information. Without further ado, let's jump right in. So you'll see that uh, my Fitbit Inspire 3 is already on. Now um, yours will probably not be on out of the box. So all you need to do is to connect the charging cable and um, basically you know, plug one into your computer or to a wall adapter and take the other end you'll be matching up the metal pieces like this and you'll want to just snap it into place just like this. Once you do this, it will turn on the display and then you should see what I see on mine, okay? And I'll include a couple of links in the description as well for some great charging docks as well. Um, I don't tend to use the cable because it's a little irritating but there's some really nice charging docks you can get to have it charge on your nightstand. Okay, next let's talk about how to pair it with your phone. I will be using an Android phone to do this. Okay, next we're gonna need to download the Fitbit app. And here I have it downloaded on my Android phone. And obviously this app is available on iOS phones as well. So iPhones, go to the App Store, and you can download it from there, it's a free app. We're gonna open it up. And the first thing it wants to do is have a sign in. Now, if you already had a Fitbit account, you'll simply hit sign in with Fitbit. And if you've never had an account, um, you can hit sign in with Google. It's a, this part is a little tricky, so I'm gonna try my best to help you navigate this. Um, if you hit sign in with Google, uh, it will check to see if you have any Google accounts that are already synced with your phone. If, it, if you do, it'll show up automatically and you can just hit continue. If you don't have an account signed in with Google, then you'll need to sign in with one. I'm gonna hit continue. So right here it says that I don't have a Fitbit account that is linked with this Google account. So I'm just gonna simply hit sign in with the existing Fitbit account. And this, this to me is a little bit of a glitch in their sign in process because what if you don't have a Fitbit account? See right now it has me on the Fitbit sign in page but I don't have a Fitbit account either. So what do I do? So uh, basically you're gonna hit forgot password you're gonna put in your email address, hit send instructions. Then I'll need to go home and I'll need to go to my um, Gmail. And let's take a look at those instructions here. We received your request, reset your password. Now, essentially what's happening here is it's setting up an account for me because I don't have one. And this is where the process is a little tricky. Now, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if this gets updated later, but as of right now, this is the initial process to get into the account, especially if you don't already have one. So I'm just gonna make a password really quickly and then we'll move forward. Okay, so I set up a password and now I'm going to use that to sign in. Now I'm gonna hit sign in. There we go. Let's jump back over to the Fitbit app now and we can hit sign in. So now we have to sign in again using the app. And then after this, it's gonna link to our Gmail account. All right, so now we're signing in and the next page should be asking us to link it with our Google account. Oh, it looks like we're in, which is great. Okay, so that was a little tedious. So just try to follow the steps. Just take it one step at a time. I believe Google is gonna update this because this is definitely not the best user experience in terms of the setup, but nonetheless, now we are in and we can uh, enable the permissions. So you tap the permissions button, tap allow. And this is the home screen of the Fitbit app. So pretty easy there. So the next step is, so we're in the app, we're signed into our account. Now we have to link it to our Fitbit. So upper left corner, tap on this icon in the corner. And this is the icon you hit to link your device. So we're gonna tap add device. We're going to go down to the Inspire 3, hit Setup. We're gonna tap where it says Nearby Permission, tap Allow, tap Setup again. 
swipe up. I agree. Now it's telling you now to connect the charger. We did that at the beginning, so we're already good to go. Next, tap enable. And it's basically gonna use your location for tracking the distance of your workouts, things like that. Now, if you would prefer not to enable all the location permissions, you can simply tap on continue without location at the bottom. If you wanna continue, you'll tap on each one just like this and you'll tap while I'm using, you'll tap background permissions, you'll go up to always or allow all the time, go back and then hit done. Now it's gonna start searching for the Fitbit. Now if you notice, our screen here is not flashing the text anymore. It might have gone on because it sat idle for too long. So we will need to connect that charger once again. Okay, so let's connect the charger once again. That's gonna get our screen to pop on. There we go. And as soon as the screen came on, um, it popped up and it's already detected it. So it's already asking us to put in the code. And I just wanna show you, this is the code right here on the screen, 9442. And we're gonna enter that on our screen. Now your code will be different. The code will be different for every Fitbit. So just as an FYI, you can also see on the Fitbit here, it is showing Okay, so it did pair successfully, and now it's starting to show the time, which is great. And there's a few more things we'll need to enable on the screen here. So we're gonna turn this on, allow access for calls and contacts. So that's basically when a call comes through, it'll actually show on your Fitbit that someone's calling you. That's what we're giving permission for. We're gonna hit pair, press okay. So this is a new feature that we can enable and it'll just be tracking your, your heart based on your pulse, I believe. I'm gonna hit skip for now. Let's hit next, next. Obviously take your time when you go through and read through those, but just to get us to the main screen, it's also showing us here how to change the bands. And I'll have a couple of links for some band recommendations in the description as well. Hit next. So now it's giving us a quick walkthrough of just how to use it. So um, firmly pressing on the left and right. So there's touch buttons on the left side and on the right side. And when we squeeze, we can use that to turn the screen on and off. And I get that it's blurry over here and I'll um, zoom in and show a lot more of this in the next step. So just as an FYI, let's hit next. And again, I'll show all this once we get past the screen, next. Next, and we're done. Now the last screen here is gonna ask if you wanna sign up for the Fitbit Premium Membership, and that gives you access to um, some deeper insights in terms of your workouts. Um, there are, um, you can join workouts that they offer on the platform, and some additional stress management scores and tools. Um, they give you a deal if you sign up at the point of setting up your Fitbit, so, $9.99 a month or $79 billed annually. I'm gonna hit not now for now. And our Fitbit is officially synced to our phone. And now we can simply hit the back button and get back to our main screen. Okay, so we've officially linked our Fitbit to our phone, which is great. And we're set up so now we can see the main screen. So I'm gonna pull the phone away for now and let's focus on the Fitbit. And we'll just walk through how to find everything, how to navigate the screens. This will be all about just simply how to use the device. So we talked about briefly how pinching can turn the screen on or turn the screen off. But obviously if the Fitbit is on your wrist and you turn your wrist, that will also wake up the screen. And I just wanna show you. So if I swipe down, this is the um, feature where you can toggle on and off the auto wake feature and that's what I just referenced. So when the Fitbit is on your wrist, auto wake is basically saying if you turn your wrist, the screen is gonna come on. And if for whatever reason you don't want that to be on, you can simply turn this off. 
And if that's off, now when you turn your wrist, it's not gonna automatically turn the screen on. So you decide if that's something you want to be on. I tend to like it on because it just makes it easier. You would essentially have to turn your wrist and then you would have to you know, uh, tap the main screen or, or press on the side buttons to turn it on and that sounds kind of tedious. So um, I would say keep that auto wake on. It just makes it easier. Okay, so swiping down, let's start with this. This gives you a few different options. So the auto awake, this is the do not disturb mode. If you're going into a meeting and you don't want it to vibrate every time a notification comes through, you can turn on the do not disturb mode. You have the sleep mode, which will limit notifications. You have the find my phone. You can use this to ping your phone right from your Fitbit. So just to show you, if I tap on that and hit find phone, my phone is going to ping. There you go. So my phone is ringing right now. And simply hit cancel for it to stop. So that's a fun feature. You can use your Fitbit to simply track down where your phone is. And as we, so as we keep going, you can change which wrist your Fitbit is on. So left wrist or right wrist. And you have the water lock feature. So this is when you get in the shower or you get into a pool, this will disable the touch screen so that it's not constantly going off because of the sensitivity to water. So if I tap here and I turn on water lock, so it says to, to turn on water lock, you simply have to double tap firmly. So two hard presses and now the water lock is turned on. And if I want to turn it off, same thing, two firm presses will turn it off. So just like that, two firm presses will also turn the water lock feature off as well. Okay, and we're almost to the end of what's in this top menu here, water lock and then the settings. So this is how you get to the settings menu and you can make different changes to more detailed features. I'm not gonna go too deep into the settings. Now, if I wanna get back to the main screen, I can pinch just like this on the left and right side. That will take me back to the main screen, just like that. Or if I wanna get back to the main screen, I just simply, from the left side of the, the display, swipe in, and that will also take me back to the main screen. So no matter what you're doing, if I'm here, and I want to get back to the main screen, I'm just going to swipe from the left side into the screen and that takes you back to the home screen. Now, if I swipe through the menu here, I have my notification panel and this is going to let me know if I have any new text messages. Looks like I have a text from my brother here. I can clear that. You can also set it up to get notifications for emails and other apps as well. We'll go over that in a later step of the video, but that's where all your notifications will be found. You can start a workout. So right now I can start a walk or I can swipe up for a run, a bike ride, a swim, or choose from a few other workouts. Now swipe left. Here is the relaxation mode and going into here and turning it on will trigger a two minute relaxation session where it will give you some commands to help you calm yourself. So um, it'll have you take a few breaths, slow breaths, long breaths, and do some other things to help calm yourself. And then here you can set up an alarm. Now let's do one together. So I just tapped on add. And first I'm gonna set the, um, the hour. And let's make this um, three o'clock. And then I'm going to tap on that. So I just tapped the screen once I was on the uh, hour that I wanted. And let's make it 45. Okay, I want 345. I'm gonna tap the screen again, tap PM, and now my alarm is set. So that's the process. And I can toggle this alarm on and off just by tapping. You can also set it to repeat if you want this alarm to go off every day, or if you just want it to be a one-time alarm. Now I can also come in here, let's turn this off for now so it doesn't randomly go off. And you can again tap on that time, let's go back. 
So here it's showing the alarm. If I want to change it, I can simply tap on the alarm time and just pick a new time. I'm going to start on the left side of the screen and swipe in to go back, go back. And now we're all done with alarms. Let's keep swiping. I can set a timer as well by tapping add and same thing. Select the amount of minutes. You can go up to one hour. I'm going to make a 55 minute timer tap there, tap for seconds, and then I can hit start to have that alarm going. I tend to use this feature a lot for laundry. I wish it went a little bit higher. One hour is not long enough, but um, I'll take it. It's still useful. I can pause it. I can swipe up to reset it or just swipe in to move out of that section. Keep swiping through and that's the last page. Now, swiping left or swiping right is not going to matter. It's going to take you through to the same menu options. Now, the next thing is if we swipe up, we're going to see a snapshot of our day. So today's date, how many steps we've done, how many miles, how many active minutes we've done, how many calories we've burnt, and our hourly activity. So that's all we're going to see. Also our heart rate as well. So that's a brief just tour of the device and how to change some of the different settings you see on screen. I just thought of one thing that's really important that I want to show you. So let's tap the screen here and let's swipe all the way up to the settings. Go to display. Now in the display settings, there's a few important things that you can change that I want to point out to you. The first thing is the brightness. Uh, right now it's on normal brightness. If I tap, this will push it up to max brightness. It'll look a little bit brighter or I can take it down to dim the screen. So you have three different options there. Next, we have the screen timeout time. So if I tap here, I can set it so the screen will stay on a bit longer. Right now, the screen goes off pretty quickly. So I want to increase the screen timeout. I'm going to press OK. Now, it won't let you set a specific number of seconds or minutes. There's simply some, some options here. So there is a medium. There's a long. You just have to simply keep tapping to toggle between those options, medium, long, or regular. Now, the last thing is the always on display, which is a really nifty feature. With the always on display, you can set it so when the screen goes off, it will still show you the time, and I love this feature so much. Now, keep in mind, if you use this feature, the battery is going to drain a bit faster because the screen is gonna always be working, but to me, it's worth it to always be able to see the time. Now, I want to show you right now. Notice the screen just went off and the screen is completely blank. Now, when you turn on the always on display, it's going to show the time even though the screen is no longer um, on, just like this. So let's tap the screen. And I'm going to turn this on. Now, by default, it's set so that between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., this feature will not be active. It's only going to be active during normal uh, times of the day. So now that the always on display is turned on, I want to show you what it looks like. So this is the screen when it's on. And give it a few seconds. You'll notice the letters are not going to be as bold. There we go. So this is the always on display. So now the screen is technically off, but it's still going to display the time. The cool thing with this is that when you change the clock type, the always on display is going to change with whatever clock that you pick. So now I'll always be able to see the time when this is enabled. And if I tap the screen, watch how the letters are going to get bolder. So now the screen is actually on. So it's up to you if you want to keep this feature on. I like it because I can always glance down at my wrist and see the time and I don't have to always turn my wrist to activate the screen. So it's up to you how you want to uh, handle that. Now that we've kind of finished kind of going through the menus and just how to navigate the device, let's jump back to the phone and I want to show you some important settings you'll want to turn on and tweak uh, to finish out our setup. If you're getting value out of this video, please take a minute and bump that like button down below. That support will help this video reach a lot more people and it helps to support the channel as well. So thank you in advance for doing that. 
Now let's jump into the app and I wanna walk you through some of the things that you'll want to enable and also show you how to change the watch face. Uh, just quickly, I wanna show you as well, um, the Fitbit automatically triggered an update. So if you ever see this on the screen, it just means that the software is updating to stay up to date with whatever the latest features are. So no big deal there. Now, we're in the app and what we wanna do is we wanna tap on the corner in the corner Upper left corner right here is showing a percentage. That percentage is basically how much battery we have left on the Fitbit. We're gonna tap there. We're gonna tap on our Inspire 3. Let's walk through this menu and I wanna show you the important things that you'll want to tweak. The first thing is how to turn on your notifications and set it up so that specific apps can send you alerts. Tap on notifications. We're gonna tap enable notifications Tap on Fitbit, you're gonna enable it. Tap allow, allow. And now, here are some other um, specific things that we can tweak. Now this first option here, it says mirror your phone. I don't love this feature because essentially every single notification that pings your phone is also going to vibrate on your wrist and it can be overwhelming if you're logged into a lot of apps and a lot of email accounts. So I personally would not want to enable this, but if you don't have a, not, a lot of notifications coming through your phone, this might be just an easy one to turn on. Now, if you opt not to turn that on, you can go through here and set specific apps that you want to be able to ping. Let's start with text messages. So this phone only has one text messaging app, so this one is easy, it's gonna ping any text messages that come through Google Message. But if you have WhatsApp installed on your phone, then you could set it so that WhatsApp messages will come through. So that's where you might see some other options here. Next, your calendar. You can select what specific calendar you want to send you calendar uh, appointments. Next, you have emails. And again, mine by default is Gmail, but again, you may have multiple apps on your phone. You may have a work, Outlook on your phone and you can have that set to send you pings when you get new emails. Now next, app notifications. Here is where you get very specific and you can go through and say, I only want these certain apps to send me alerts. I promise you, you don't wanna select every single app. You want to limit this because if not, your wrist is going to just ring all day every time new alerts come through and it can just get annoying. So. I would go through here and decide what are the most important apps you wanna be pinged. Be careful with social media because there's just pings all throughout the day that can be irritating. Um, Google Maps is one that I'd like to have enabled, especially if you're getting directions. It can let you know when it's time for your next turn, things like that. Your phone, so that when someone calls you, it will alert. TikTok is another one I'd be careful of. YouTube, same thing. I'd be careful I wouldn't turn those on. I don't have a lot of apps on this phone, so it's pretty easy for me to not enable a lot of these notifications, but for you, be selective. Amazon might be a fun one to be alerted when a package is on the way or maybe a refund has hit your account. So go through that and decide what's more important to you. Now also, you can change these later. So if you wanna just turn them all on and see how it goes, Maybe try that first and see if it works for you. If not, come back through and turn a couple off. Excuse me, come back through and just turn a couple off. Okay, next, your quick replies. So while you can't actually talk on the phone, for quick replies, here you can have certain messages set up. For example, if a call comes through and you can't answer the phone at the time, you can set a specific uh, auto reply. For example, Yes, no, sounds good, can't talk now, we'll reply later. We could tap here and say, I'm in a meeting. So then you can have this sent as a reply if you get a call and you can't answer. You can also change this to good to go. You know, maybe change the verbiage to how you talk. You can also do that too. And then if you tap on emoji, you can actually set specific emojis as the responses too. So you can send an emoji as an auto reply. 
Okay, next, let's talk about how to change the clock face because the clock face that, that comes stock is pretty cool, but there's so many other ones you can pick from. So on this screen, you're gonna tap on gallery. And from here, you'll have uh, some really great clocks to choose from. So at the top, you'll tap on clocks. It's right next to Inspire 3. So here are all the watch faces that are available for you to add to your Fitbit. And let's go through here and let's pick one to change. So I like this one here. I'm going to tap on this one and tap on this install button. And it just takes a few seconds for it to sync. You'll see the Fitbit logo pop up first, and then you'll see that new watch face show up on the screen. And there's our new watch face. Now I wanna point out that you can tap the screen to change the metrics. So in the upper left corner, this is where the metrics will show up. And right now, so it says zero active minutes, tap it again, zero steps. That's the heart rate, calories burnt, and distance. So you can tap just on the screen to change what displays on your Fitbit in terms of the metrics. And if you go all the way through, it'll just show the time. So that's just one of many watch faces that are available. And if I swipe up here, you can see all the different views or screenshots of the different metrics that the app will show. And at the bottom here, you'll see some recommended other watch faces that you might like. Now take your time and go through to look at the different options that are available. And when we hit our back button here, go back to our gallery. So that's a quick rundown of just how to change the watch face. Now, right next to clocks, you have apps. And here, you'll see all the different apps that are um, on the Fitbit. Unfortunately, there's not a store that will let you add more. These are the only apps that are available. Next, I wanna go over how to make a few other important tweaks. One specifically is to your step goal. So if you go to main goal here, you can um, first of all set, what do you want your main goal to be every day? Is it number of steps? Is it the distance? Is it burning so many calories? Or is it number of active zone minutes? So that's the first thing, set the type of goal you want each day. After you've set your goal, you're gonna hit the back button, press it again. You wanna go to you, swipe up, under goals, tap see all. And here we can swipe up under steps. You're gonna tap there and you can change this goal to make it more or less. Maybe you wanna really reach for 15K steps a day or maybe 10,000 is a bit much and you'd rather go for 7,500. Set that goal here and you can also go in and set a bedtime goal, a wake up goal, exercise goal, and then it will hold you accountable with alerts and notifications. You can also go in and set your, your goals for how many calories you wanna burn a day, um, set goals for the weight you want, body fat percentage, all that, how much water you wanna drink a day. You can customize all of this to help you keep track of all your goals. Now let's go back to our Fitbit. Now the very last thing I wanna show you is how to interact with calls when they come through. So I'm gonna initiate a call that's gonna pop up on the screen in a couple of seconds here. There we go. So I can drag down to answer the call or I can drag up to decline the call. So those are the two options you'll get. Now one more thing I wanna show you is when you decline the call, if you just swipe up, it's gonna dismiss the call, but then it will give you this pop-up to show you, okay, this person called and if I tap, then I can swipe up to get an option to call back. Or I can tap on this option, which is to send one of my quick replies. So I can send, you know, yes, no, sounds good, can't talk now, or what's up. So I can tap that and it will automatically send that as a reply text message. There you go. And I just got the message. And let me initiate the call one more time. I wanna show you just one more thing in terms of the options that will show up. Okay, so I'm gonna 
swipe up, dismiss the call, and tap. And so call back, auto reply text, auto reply with an emoji, or I can just simply clear this out altogether showing that I saw the notification. So that's how you interact with calls when they come through. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you found this helpful. I try to be thorough and go over all the important things you would need to know from setup to important things in the settings that you'll want to adjust and obviously all the fun stuff too. So if you found value in this video, please take a minute and bump that like button down below. Again, it will help this video to reach more people and just helping to educate folks who have this device and to feel comfortable with it. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Leave me some feedback in the comment section. Let me know again if you found value in the video that lets me know that this is a good series to continue to make. Or if no one comments, maybe it's time to wrap this one up. So I wanna hear from you in the comment section down below. Also as a reminder, you'll find some really good accessories for your Fitbit Inspire 3 in the comment section. I'll link to some good charging docks, some good uh, different bands you can purchase as well. So check out that link in the description to find some other cool things to go with your Fitbit Inspire 3. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.